Greetings everyone. My name is Abin Natishwas. I am the physics instructor at Lebao International Academy. Today, I'm going to present to you the physics of injera in relationship with thermodynamics, which is part of the injera project done by our students. Today's presentation includes stating and explaining the first and second laws of thermodynamics, explaining the working principles of heat engines and how to calculate their efficiencies, and doing a course integration and a curriculum plus on the first and second law of thermodynamics. Let's start with the definition. What is thermodynamics? Thermodynamics is a compound of two Greek words, therme, which means heat, and dynamis, which means power. As such, thermodynamics is a science that speaks of the power or energy contained in heat and its conversion to other forms of energies. The first law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics is the law of conservation of energy applied to a thermal system. By system, what we mean is any group of atoms, molecules, particles, or objects we wish to deal with. The system may be the steam in a steam engine, the whole Earth's atmosphere, or even a body of a living creature. It's important to define what's contained within the system as well as what is outside of it. The first law of thermodynamics states that energy can be transferred from one place to another place or transformed from one form to another form, but it can never be created nor destroyed. For a thermodynamical system, the first law of thermodynamics can be stated as Q is equal to change in U plus W, where Q is the heat added to the system or removed from the system, change in U is the internal energy of the system, and W is the work done on the system or by the system. If we add heat to the system, the added energy will either increase the internal energy of the system if it remains inside the system, or it does external work if it leaves the system. Let's pass to the second law of thermodynamics. Before we state the second law of thermodynamics, it's important to define entropy. Entropy can be defined informally as the measure of the randomness or disorder in a system, or statistically, Entropy can be defined as the tendency of systems to take their most probable form. The second law of thermodynamics states that during any natural process, the total amount of entropy in the universe always increases. That means things tend to go from ordered state to a disordered state. Or we can state the second law as the entropy of an isolated system never decreases. Here are some consequences of the second law of thermodynamics. Number one, heat will not flow from a cold body to a hot body, or reverse diffusion is impossible. In order for work to be done, the available energy has to flow from higher level to a lower level. When it reaches a lower level, the energy is still in existence, but no longer capable of doing work. So heat will naturally flow from a hot body to a cold body, but not in the reverse way. Number two, an object or fluid of uniform temperature, no matter how hot it is, cannot do any useful work. Number three, every naturally occurring transformation of energy is accompanied somewhere by a loss in the availability of energy for future performance of work. That means the various forms of energy tend to degrade over time to thermal energy. This represents a useful low probability form of energy converting into an unuseful high probability form. Number four, anytime we do something that decreases the entropy of a system, the energy we expend in doing it increases the entropy of the surrounding even more. For example, it's possible to decrease the entropy of our dormitory physically by putting everything back to its original ordered place. But in doing this, we must expend energy. This energy expenditure increases the entropy of our surroundings more than it decreases the entropy of the room. Thus, the entropy of the universe is increased. Now it's time to see how the laws of thermodynamics are applied to a heat engine. A heat engine is a device that uses heat to perform work. The basic idea behind a heat engine is that mechanical work can be obtained as heat flows from high temperature to low temperature 
some of the heat can be transformed into work in the heat engine. A heat engine has three main parts, the hot reservoir, the engine, and the cold sink. The amount of work done by a heat engine depends on the size of the reservoirs, engine efficiency, and the temperature difference between the hot reservoir and the cold sink. QH is the heat that flows from the hot region, QC is the heat flowing into the cold region, and W is the useful work done by the engine. The efficiency of an engine can be defined by the ratio of how much work can be done by the amount of heat that comes out of the hot reservoir. Efficiency is equal to work output divided by heat input. We can also determine the maximum theoretical efficiency of a heat engine using the Carnot efficiency. The Carnot efficiency states that the efficiency of an ideal engine is equal to TH minus TC divided by TH. Now let's see how the concept that we have discussed so far could be integrated to the process of injurabiki. Electric injera method is a device that converts electrical energy into heat in the process of injera baking. The heat generated by the heating system is the input energy for the baking process. This input energy is a function of voltage and current flowing across the heating element. This relationship is given by Q is equal to V times I times T. The system thermal efficiency is the ratio of the net useful energy utilized to the gross energy supply, which is computed by using this equation. Efficiency is equal to useful energy utilized divided by total energy input. With this equation, we can determine the efficiency of the electric injera method we are using in our homes. The existing electric injera baking pan or method technology is believed to have been in the market for over 40 years. This electric pan's average power is about 3.5 kilowatt. Its main problem is its high energy consumption and low efficiency which ranges between 45 to 55%. It consumes 60 to 70% of the total household energy demand. Recent researches on how to improve the efficiency of electric methods identify the different ways in which an injera method could lose heat. The heat lost at the bottom of the clay plate in the form of radiation creates the major portion of the heat loss from the method. Heat insulation is commonly made using either sandstone gypsum, and a mixture of soil, which all have high thermal conductivity. On the other hand, the lifting cover stays closed for over half of the baking cycle and gets heated up. As a result, heat is lost to the surrounding through radiation, convection, and conduction from the lifting cover. Moreover, since electric metals have no temperature regulating devices, a significant amount of energy is lost due to overheating. Finally, let's see some practical applications of the laws of thermodynamics. Here is a general schematic for energy changing device. We have an input energy, which the device converts some of it into a useful work, and the rest is deposited as waste energy. The following are the practical applications of thermodynamics. Turbine compressor. Automobile engines Refrigeration systems Power plants Now, let's summarize what we have learned so far. In today's presentation, 
we have defined thermodynamics as the study of energy conversion between heat and other forms of energies. We have stated the first and the second law of thermodynamics. And we have also defined heat engine as a device that converts heat energy into a useful mechanical work. I hope you have enjoyed our presentation. Thank you for being with us. And goodbye.